everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys, I've been gone for like five whole days. I know I've been giving you guys a lot of content lately and I had to take a little break for myself, you know, mentally to recover. And also I had a lot of work to catch up on, so it, it is what it is. Anyways, I'm back now and we are going to do another iconic wig recreation. Yes, I want to stick with the theme of holiday season, holiday season, and do an icon of Christmas time. Now, my childhood was filled with the music of Ronnie Spector. And if you don't know who it is, she was the lead singer of the Ronettes back in the 1960s. You know, Frosty the Snowman, Sleigh Ride, all those great classics. Ronnie Spector has a hand in, you know, just the sound of Christmas time. So I wanted to do a tribute to her hairstyle. She wore the iconic beehive bouffants with a long flowing ponytail. This look has been replicated by Amy Winehouse. It was later adapted by her into her aesthetic because she loved Ronnie Spector. So we are going to start with a few things. First things first, I have to give a shout out to somebody. I got a Christmas present in my P.O. box. Yes, I did. Well, I don't know if it was a Christmas present, but I'm treating it as such because it's December and you know, Christmas time. Anyways, just go with it, okay? I got this in my P.O. box. Someone was lovely enough to send me a Barbie cape. Look at that, it's fabulous in this chic 1970s pool party print. It's a big old cape. I won't put it on my doll in this video because as you can see, she's on her way to work. She can't wear this big showy thing. Someone might steal it from her locker. And they also sent me some little enamel pins of Barbie. Look at that, she's all cool with her glasses on and stuff. The ponytail Barbie. <laughs> I love it. Now let's read a little bit from the notes. Hey James, first off, love the videos. Cut there. <laughs> it always cheers me up when I'm having a bad day. I also love that you are an avid Barbie collector and not afraid to experiment with customizing them. It's true, I've, I've ruined a lot of Barbie dolls on this channel. I recently received a box of goodies from a now canceled National Barbie Doll Collectors Convention. How do I get an invite to that? Oh my God. They gave me a bunch of pins based on my participation and I found a couple extras. I don't have any use for extras. Thank you for your leftovers, sweetheart. I do appreciate it. <laughs> I've been teaching myself how to sell mostly Barbie clothes for the past few years and your videos have helped me create custom Barbies. I've included a cape that I created from a vintage pattern from the 70s. I also sewn a whole lot of bell bottoms. I may have a problem. <laughs> You do. With much love, Jacob Root. Thank you so much, Jacob. Oh my God, and thank you for the gifts. Oh my goodness. Let me move them over here so they get full of hairspray. I meant to do that in the last video. This cape was sitting here the whole time and I completely spaced out and forgot to mention it. But you got your shout out now, okay? Better late than never. Now, I'm going to show you the stuff I'm gonna use today. Now, I have left over from that Trixie video I did with her. She brought Elvira wigs from Secret Wishes and she had one left over that we didn't end up using and I coaxed her into leaving it here. So, <laughs> as you can tell, it has not been used or seen or taken out of storage since that video. And we're gonna use this today as our base wig. <laughs> Secret Wishes. All right, let's put that here. And I also have, in case we need it, I have a black fall just the, the back piece of a wig. And we're gonna use this in case we need extra hair, but it's gonna be on the sidelines because I don't know if I'll need it or not. We'll see how this wig looks. I'm probably gonna need it, but we'll see. I'm not gonna hold up any further. Let me just get this wig prepped on the block and I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, I am back. I have it all pinned down on the block. Now I did something a little peculiar when it came to this wig. Now I remember when Trixie wore it, she had to stuff it with towels from the hotel room because it was really, really hollow inside these Secret Wishes wigs. So I took a wig and I turned it inside out and I made a bump and just stuffed it inside that hollow crevice here. And then I pinned it on the head just so we have a nice solid base when we start doing our teasing because otherwise it'd be all over the place. Now what I'm gonna do here is just detangle it. From the looks of it, it's actually very, very, it held up very nicely. And with Ronnie Spector's hair, it was always pulled back into a ponytail. She never really wore it long. If she did, it was an entirely different hairstyle. With the beehive, it was always like tied back and pulled to the side. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna tie this off and not worry about it and get right to the beehive. Cause that is the piece de resistance of this hairstyle. And you like my short little pixie wig? This is from James Mansfield Beauty, available now. <laughs> link down below, I'll link it. I'll link you girl. All right, now that is finished. Let's get started on the actual haircut now. Let's brush down our bob. What's so weird about these wigs is like, it is a long fall with just a bob sewn onto it. And the rest is like, you know, we just have to make it work. 
Now, if you were doing like a novice production of like Leader of the Pack, you'd be done. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got to do. But we don't do novice on this channel, girl. We are going to try and replicate her hair as close as I can get it in a drag form. And I picked this Elvira wig for this because the haircut is similar. And that's also because like Elvira, when they were creating her, her and her costume designer decided on the hair should be, you know, a channeling Vampyra and Ronnie Spector from the Ronettes. Something that's like a big knowledge bump, they call it. Let's start our teasing. I'm going to tease out this entire thing and we are going to try our best to smooth it in. And as I'm looking at it, yeah, we're gonna need that second wig because I want more volume because whatever we're gonna get from this is not gonna be enough. And there's a certain shape you wanna achieve with this when it comes to like the raw nets. Their stuff was more about height and not so much just like wideness, but just going up. <laughs> All right, I am back. Now I'm just gonna pack in whatever teasing I have because we're gonna need it pushed down to those roots. And as I suspected, I am gonna need to do a second wig on this. Yes, I am. I mean, technically I could probably push all this back and get away with doing something, you know, without doing it, but I want big hair, okay? Just let me have big hair. I'm gonna make sure that teasing is packed down to it as much as possible, and we just have little strandies left. And as was, if you were just to brush this out and smooth it out, you would get, you know, a good classic, almost like, you know, B-52's kind of beehive. We don't speak that name in this house. But we don't want that, okay? We want Ronnie Spector. I'm going to set her to the side and we're going to start our fall and tease that out. And I also gotta do some hair cutting to it as well. So I'm gonna reset with that and I'll be jumping back, but it's not gonna be right back. It's gonna be like a cut and I'll be back. I have my fall all on the head. Now this is a bit too long. I don't need all this length. So we're gonna cut some layers in this cause we're gonna tease this up to make our beehive back piece. I'm gonna take that off and just cut it at an angle because it's gonna be basically be cut to be teased. I'm just cutting away what I know is gonna tease down into a layering and help create volume. And layers, just I don't know what it is, they create great instant volume. And the length on this is not important. It's all, it's just meant to be teased. Ugh. Now, I was so excited to do this video because I love Ronnie Spector. Like she's one of my favorite people in the whole world, one of my icons growing up in the teenager. I idolized her. I thought she was so fabulous and so chic and so ahead of her time. And what I always loved about the Ronettes is like they're considered like the bad girls of like the girl group era of the 1960s. They had this unique look. They were like thick, thick, thick wing eyeliner, white lipstick, these big, big, big beehives. They wore tight dresses. They'd have slits in them. They just did a lot of stuff that a lot of girls didn't do. Like a lot of girl groups at that time were very much focused on being very pristine and packaged well. They usually looked like they were going to church. They all wore like matching pink dresses with ruffles and balloon skirts and all sort of stuff like that. Very, very like pure looking. But the Ronettes stood out because they just had an edge to them. They came from Harlem and they had basically just the flavors of Harlem's amazing music scene at that time in the 60s just infused all throughout. And what's always so crazy to think about about those girl groups in the 1960s is that they're all like teenagers. They're all like babies, you know? Some girls as young as 12 years old doing stuff in the music industry, touring, singing live, going on American Bandstand, going on long tours with other bands. Like, it's crazy to think about. And like no other point in music did you ever see so many teenage bands just out touring. I think what was unique about the Ronettes especially is the fact that their lead singer, Ronnie, had such a unique voice. It's sort of like a, like a very much a vibrato where it sounds almost like a baby singing. Very much inspired by the likes of Frankie Lyman. That was a big appeal of his voice. Or could just sing these like juvenile ballads and just have so much soul behind them and so much feeling. Now, Ronnie Spector's namesake comes from the ill-famed music producer, Phil Spector, who is now in prison for murder. But Ronnie got away. She wrote a book that was fascinating back in the early 2000s called Be My Baby, How I Survived Mascara, Miniskirts, and Madness. And just some of the tales she told in that were incredible to read. Just like, it would shock you some of the stuff she had to deal with being married to that man. Like, Phil Spector was a very eccentric person, like Howard Hughes-esque, but like, you know, to the moon as far as crazy goes. Allegedly, this is all legend. No. From her book, not my own words. So, take it with a grain of salt. It's one side of the story, but from some of the stuff she told in there, it was shocking. Like one passage talked about how when she was married to him, 
he basically like cut her off from the world, like her family and everything. She wasn't allowed to talk to her friends. She wasn't allowed to go out unless she was supervised. Very like the stuff Mariah Carey talked about with Tommy Mottola, but like to the extreme, girl. And the one that was really, really shocking, that was like the straw that broke the camel's back. She talked about how it had gotten so bad that he had had construction going on in the basement and he wouldn't tell her what was going on. She was just so concerned because like he was getting really, really erratic. And finally, the day comes and he takes her down to the basement and he shows her this golden casket with a glass top. And he told her like, if you ever leave me, I will kill you and display you in this. And I guess it's like, I don't, that sounds so insane to think about, but like he had all the money in the world. It could be true for all we know. And it's like, girl, I would leave after that. <laughs> And from what she said, she like, you know, didn't even have shoes on when she fled that house. She lost everything. And to that point, like, he was so butthurt about her leaving him that like, he blocked her from having a career for years. She was blackballed. Producers wouldn't work with her out of fear of, you know, Phil Spector basically cutting them off and blackballing them. Anytime she tried to have a breakout hit or anything, it was always stopped. So whenever you saw a little like smidget of things get through, it was like a miracle. And they didn't get into the Hall of Fame until well after he was arrested. And that's the sad part about girl group music from the 60s. A lot of those girl groups aren't in there. Like the Crystals, the Shangri-Las, Marvelettes, none of them are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's a very, very select few, despite the fact that it was such an influential and important period in, in rock and roll music. All right, let's start our teasing. And I'm probably gonna do this for a little bit because honestly, y'all know what I'm doing here. We're just gonna pillow it down so that it can be put together with the rest of it. <laughs> the hair is teased out and I'm just making sure it is packed, packed, packed down. Girl, ugh, so much work, but it's gonna be worth it. All right, she is just about ready. I'm gonna transfer this over and put our other wig back on. That there, other wig. Now it's time to part out space here. And thankfully the tracks here are sewn rather haphazardly so I can really just part it like there, like the Red Sea, there we go. Okay, take our back piece, put it right on. And we are going to actually, I think I might stuff this because we want the most maximum height that we can get. Now I was obsessed with the Phil Spector Christmas album, like the a Christmas gift to you from Phil Spector. Cause it's like every single artist on his label at that time in the sixties is in it. And uh, they all had like these different Christmas standards that they did. And the unique thing about that album is like when it came out, it wasn't that big of a hit. It actually was kind of a bomb. And like it was to call it a sleeper hit is an understatement. It did not get popular till well after it had come out. And just, you know, people playing stuff on the radio to fill up space for Christmas time. It just sort of became the soundtrack of Christmas. In essence, has given a lot of these girl group artists and a lot of these 60s artists, you know, second careers as soon as Christmas rolled around they have material that they can go on tour with. It is all zip tied on. Now it's time to start our styling. Okay, I'm just gonna push back as much as I can and just kind of combine sections. Like I said, with Ronnie Spector's Beehive, it was more or less like, you know, solid going up and not like going around like Elvira's. That's the difference. And from what I understood, like from reading her book, she says that all those hairstyles was her own hair. Like they just had super, super long hair that they had little, very little they could do with it. So they just teased it up and put it in the beehives just to get it out of their face and be done with it. But if you look at it, like they had amazing hairstyles. All the Ronettes were lead singer Ronnie, Ronnie Spector, Veronica Spector. And then there was her sister Estelle Bennett and Nedra Talley. Nedra was her cousin, Estelle was her sister. Estelle had the biggest hair. That's what I always remember about her. Like when it, you look at pictures of the Ronettes, she has the biggest hair. Like it's either the most high or it's just the most voluminous and pretty. She always had the prettiest hairstyles. Ronnie's were pretty too, but like from the way they started dressing her after they were signed to Phil Spector, she was always portrayed to be a little more elegant because I think he had plans in mind to go solo with her, but they were a victim of like the Phil Spector, you know, formula where he made something, got a huge hit with it, and then he sort of abandoned it. Like he did that with the Crystals. Like when the Crystals got a big hit, he was determined to get them a hit and went to great lengths to make sure they had one. Even going so far as to like find other backup singers to sing lead and just make a record that wasn't their voices at all and say it was them. And a big struggle for these young girls who are like 16 that had to like figure out how to sing in these different keys on the road so people wouldn't catch on. But with the Ronettes, it was especially a, like a groomed project. He had a lot of hand in because 
He was looking for that sound of like a Frankie Lyman-esque singer, but female, where they sound sort of like a little girl. He wanted to capture that for like these melodramatic girl group songs. And he found that with Ronnie and was basically courting her to create what he thought would be eventually be a solo artist, but he just like went bananas for her and ended up marrying her. And that put a complete halt to her career. Once they were married, she was done. She wasn't recording anything ever again. And he basically locked her away, which is a sad thing for like a lot of singers that sort of happens where they have a big success happen to them very quickly. And they're so like, there's dead set they're gonna have a huge career if they're treated properly and given like the proper grooming. And it doesn't happen. Like things happen that are just put into place, like these roadblocks come and just the career doesn't flourish the way it's supposed to. And it's not fair. It's like, she should have been way bigger than she was. Like, I feel like she should be talked about in the same kind of breaths of like influences like Diana Ross and people like that. It's just, she just didn't have the opportunity. And honestly, what I'm doing here is I'm just going over the smoothing comb and brushing back. And with Ronnie's, her hairstyle sort of like flared and went around. It wasn't like, you know, the classic go straight back. Hers had sort of a swoop to it. And what I like about beehives is that they don't have to necessarily be the neatest. And especially with black on black, it's very easy to hide any kind of hair peeking through because it's just so dark. It's not gonna read at all, unless someone's like all up in your hair. But trust, there are some people out here who do that for some reason. Girl, get a life. And what I'm working towards right now is basically trying to create directions where it's flowing down here to create a bang, as well as going back so I can French twist it. And if you made it this far in the video, comment down below what's your favorite Christmas song. I wanna know. Mine's always been Sleigh Ride. Or actually, no, um, Christmas Baby Please Come Home, I love that one. By Darling Love, I can listen to that all the time, all year round. There's just so many, I love Christmas music. I don't get bothered by it. A lot of people really don't like it, but I'm one of those types that just adores it. It's like, you only have to hear it once a year, get over it. I mean, I used to work in department stores and they played it all the time, but again, like I was one of the few people where it didn't bother me. I really liked it. It also was like sort of a distraction because like when Sleigh Ride comes on, you hear Ronnie Spector's voice. I just start thinking about Ronnie Spector and her cool story. Like that's one of those things that it's like, it, you the little distractions you give yourself where it takes your mind off of how mundane or how boring or how miserable you are at your job. That's the way I always looked at it, at least. It's one of the few moments of pleasure you got from working in a thankless job in retail. All right, I'm gonna keep on smoothing. When I get to the back, I'm going to show you a French twist, which you've seen before, but I'm gonna finish off the French twist because I wanna keep things from you, okay? So I'm gonna keep smoothing, <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, I am back. I got it all smoothed out the way I want it. Now it's gonna be a little bit of hair gymnastics we gotta do right now. So this is probably the hardest part of the hairstyle, but really not that hard. If you know, if you've done French twists the way I do it, you probably know what I'm doing already and you can probably do it. So it's gonna gather as much of the hair as I can and as neatly as possible. I know it's gonna be hard for some of y'all. We are going to brush that surface layer and try and under curl it so that we can, you know, just roll it under with the hair and make a half French twist. As much as you can, the neatest you can do this. It's gonna be a bit of a stretch to get this hair to sort of bend to your will. But I'm gonna roll it under like that and then try our ways to make it neat and pretty, which is gonna be the hardest part because <laughs> the hair is just like, I do not want to do this. All right, have bobby pins at the ready and just start attacking. Yeah, already I can hear the hair just going like, I do not want to do this at all. What are you doing to me? Like I said, with the half French twist, we're gonna try our best to hook both sides and use a lot of bobby pins. And there's one last little touch we're gonna do because it's kind of like obvious right here, it's a wig. Which makes me beg the question, like girl, I know in the book she said it's all her hair, but some of this stuff, I'm just like, there's no way anyone has that much hair and hair to spare. Like she has hair wrapped around the beehive too. And I'm gonna do that right now. I pulled out my switch, I took the braid out of it, and we are going to throw this in front like that to create a finishing touch to it. It was like looking at like, how much hair did this woman have? Jesus Christ. It was like beehive, long ponytail, hair wrapped around the beehive. Like there's no way. I'm convinced there's a little bit of help there. <laughs> that can't all be your hair, Ronnie. Unless she's taking some sugar bear hair or something like the 1960s equivalent, I'm not buying it. Well, like I said, hers wasn't going up and out. It was going up and straight. So if it looks a little bit smushed, that's part of it. Cause I'm gonna be pushing this upward. And you could get that effect with a wig cage, but I don't have one of those right now. And I wanted to show you how you do it with actual hair. 
So it's possible to do it with both. It's just gonna take a little longer. All right, now I'm just gonna spin her around and clip down any part of the wrap that is kind of peeking through. All right, so I'm gonna take my pit comb and sort of bring those down. And these are a little too long, so I'm gonna give them a trim. Plus it's a little frizzy at the ends here. And with the bang, it's gonna be a little different. It's sort of like a Betty Page bang, only it has breaks in it. And once I put it on my head, I'll really have more fun like figuring out where I want that bottom hair to go and what's gonna get tucked in and what's gonna stick out. There, all right. Final wisp of hairspray. And I gotta try this on and do whatever little primping touches I need to do, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the final result. And oh my God. I'm so happy right now. This is so cute. Oh my God. It's such a childhood like memory of mine. I really always wanted to like have huge hair like this. Oh my God. A beehive just like Ronnie Spector's is like a dream come true for me. I remember when I first started doing drag, I really wanted to like establish a hairstyle like this for myself. But like it was around the same time as Amy Winehouse and everything. So like it would have just been like, oh, Amy Winehouse the whole time. So I decided against it. But I'm so glad now in 2020, I can have enough free time to make things like this happen. Yes. <laughs> I feel like this is a nice little tribute to the Ronettes and their signature hairstyle. And I am very, very happy with this. Now this wig is fabulous, but it is just missing one more thing. The James Mansfield Magical Wig Spray from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Let's just give this wig a spritz. Oh, oh, wah, ah, 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 ow. <laughs> ah, now my hair smells just like cream soda. Available at blackphoenixalchemylab.com. And grooming can be an absolute drag, but thankfully I have Manscaped. Use my code JAMES20 or Mansfield for 20% off your purchase, plus free shipping. And I have to take a moment, a Venmo moment, where I thank everyone who's TV on Venmo. I would like to thank a thank you to Andrew. And it says, can you wish my bestie Fernando a happy birthday? Happy birthday, Fernando. Sean, Ross, thank you so much, Ross. Happy Christmas. Michael, Cody, James, great name. Keith, thank you so much, Keith. And Griffin, oh my God. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you. And Melissa, thank you. And I also have some PayPal alimony, so stay tuned. Here we go. Um, Israel, David, oh my God. What is up with you folks? You tipped me your holiday bonuses? Say some of that for your families. I mean, I'm not getting it back, but thank you. Christina, thank you so much. Kim, and um, Israel, Susan, Rodrigo, and Audrey. Oh my God. Thank you all so much for your generosity during this holiday season. Thank you all so much. It really, truly helps keeping this channel going. And thank you all so much for watching my content, donating to me to help make the content better. Oh my God. We have so much more fun stuff planned ahead. So just keep tuned for this holiday season. Holiday season. Now this wig was so much fun to make. I'm so glad you guys actually like came down memory lane with me because honestly, the Ronettes mean so much to me. I love their music and I love Ronnie Spector. So it felt so good to make like a tribute to her hairstyle and sort of, you know, just do something I always wanted to do on this channel. So thank you guys so much for indulging me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and see the revisited RuPaul Party City wigs. Or so we recreate Selena's No Me Queda Mas hair. Yes! Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll smash your gingerbread house. So click it.